Good. Guess what today is? We've already talked about it several times. Happy Mother's Day. Aren't we, aren't we glad we have a mom? Now, did you guys make a card for your mom? Kind of like this. See the drawing? Did, did anybody do that? Or have you done it in the past? That, shows, that sh kind of shows your mom that you love her, right? Take a look at this. You might not have made a card. You might have actually bought one at the store. See that? Do you see that? That's, that is a, that a store-bought card. They're pretty fancy, aren't they? Mom might like them handmade one better. But these are good, especially if you write inside. Now, if you write inside of here, what would you put? Just say it out loud. I love you, of course. It's got to say, I love you, Mom. It has to say it. Now, that's what you say on Mother's Day to your mom. Now, look here. You don't just have to say, I love you. I, I, I got a few other examples. Because it's good to be honest with Mom, right? It's good to be honest. Listen, Mom, I often wonder how you put up with me all these years. Now, now you think that's just a dog, or you think it's you, the child? It's probably the child, yeah, and the dog in my house. Um, Mom, thanks for changing all of those diapers. We're very thankful, aren't we? Even though we don't remember, right? Hey. Hey. I want to <laughs> You sure are right there. I want What's this say, guys? Mom. Mom. You were right. Everybody say, you were right. Now, in little letters right there, it says, don't make me say it again. He's good. He's good. He's good. Okay, here's a good one. It's a pun. What do you think? You did a grape job raising me. Isn't that awesome? You see that? You did a grape job raising me. I love this card. I wish I had it. But it's just a slide. Okay, here's the, here's, here's the pinnacle. You are a great, great mom. Very special, very beautiful, really, really terrific. Everyone agrees. How about that? Well, your mom liked to get that, right? Now, now think about it. Inside this card, inside this card, what does it say? Inside this card, what's the first thing it says? It's the same as the other cards. All the cards say the first, same thing on the first. What's it say? Uh, no, no, inside, inside the card. I love you. Good job, Emmy. I love you. Now, does your mom want to hear you say I love you? Or does she want to see you say I love you? Does she want you to show it? Both, yeah. Which do which you think is better, showing or hearing? Showing. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Love, love, like the thing in your heart, is a noun. It's just a thing. But love can also be an action. It can be a verb. Now, which is better, just the thing love or the action love, the verb? The action is better. The thing that you do, doing something. So what can you do that shows mom you love her on Mother's Day? How about cleaning up your room? What do you guys think? Good idea, right? Or taking out the trash, huh? Can you all take out the trash? Okay. How about this one on the far right? Keep calm and what? Obey, Obey your mother. Okay, everybody, raise your right hand. I'm going to obey mom. Yes. And right here, this one, you're going to get along with who? Your other, your brothers and sisters. and every, Even God even commanded it. Look at this. In 1 John, God said, whoever loves God must also love his brother and his sister. It's not on the slide, but you got to love your brother and sister. God even said it because if you have God's love, you're going to love them. Now, here's the part of God's plan. Think about this. Does, was God's plan just a thing or was it an action? It was action, love in action. And how do we know we can love well? Because I'm going to tell you, God loved us first. Right here, do you see the good news? Remember, God's action plan was to send Jesus here to die for our sins so that we could come back to God, right? Right here it says we love when we can love because God loved us first. And because God loves us, what does he call us to do? Love one another. God loves us, so we're called to love each other. Love one another. Isn't that nice? And we can do it. But here, lastly, I'll say it again. Is it better to see love or to hear, or, excuse me, better to hear love or to see I love you in action? See. see it. And you know how we do it? Right here, with our hands and our feet. With our hands, we are his hands, God's hands. He's given us all a gift, and we're going to use it to share his love. And see the feet? 
God's called all of us to share the message. That means he's going to send us, and we're going to go, and what story are we going to tell? We're going to tell that good news story. Now, look here. God, you, your mom likes it when you tell her I love you when you show her, right? God does too. God commands us. He wants us to love one another. It says, love each other the same way I loved you. Now, it's Mother's Day, right? So, when you go, let's, let's go and love mom today, all right? And then let's love God the same. Okay, Cl bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this Mother's Day. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to turn love into action by loving others. And thank you so much for our moms. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids, you're going off to Children's Church. Everybody else, please say hello to your neighbor. Refill your coffee cup, and we'll be back in about five minutes. Well, let's, um, let's open our Bibles, and, and I'm, I'm going to open you to the first scripture we're going to use, but we're actually going to um, jump around a bit, so they'll all be on the screen, but you'll want to mark this one. Isaiah, oh, I'm so, it's so memorable that I forgot where it is. Isaiah 66, <laughs> Isaiah 66, all right, and it's just like, for those of you that are watching, I really do know what I'm doing, all right? So Isaiah 66, and um, let's pray if you're a mom, would you just raise your hand? I want to pray a blessing on you right now. Just moms, just, just go ahead and raise your hands. Lord Jesus, thank you for our moms. And Father, I, I thank you for the way that you honor them, Lord. This morning, we're going to look at your word. And their, who moms are, Lord, is resembled in so many of your characteristics. So God, I pray for health. I pray for wonderful sleep. I pray for a joyful day, Lord God. I pray for a day of really good reflection, Lord God. And we thank you for the gift that our mothers are. They have been. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, where are you, Mom? She's right there. How you doing, Mom? Just checking. All right, just got to nudge you. All right. I know, she's, you know she loves my messages. All right, <laughs> Isaiah 66, let's go ahead and look at this, there's a, this is, a, okay, j little trivia, if you're in my, um, no, go to the picture, oh, go to the picture, okay, what is the name of Moses's, Moses's, Moses is <laughs> birth mom, now Miriam's his sister, Yeah, really, <laughs> Google Siri, you know, no Siri, don't ask Siri. Okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you a hint, okay? When you take an egg, you break it, there's the white, and then there's the, okay, yolk, second part, okay? When you, when you go to sleep, you lie on your bed, put it together, yolk of bed, all right? That's her name, all right? Most, most sought after name for all girls in 2018, <laughs> yolk of bed. Okay, so here's the, here's the situation in, the, in this picture, right? So it's Exodus 2. It's, um, the Israelis are so numerous that the pharaoh of that time decides that he makes a decree, a legal decree, that all Hebrew boys at, at, at the moment of birth are to be killed because it's population control. It's just brutal. It's really bad. And so, um, so the it, Egyptians are having a hard time because the Israeli birth mothers, man, they're, they're described as tenacious, and it's like they take charge of that birthing room, and they just, they just these ladies manhandle these men that try to kill the babies, and uh-uh, this ain't going to happen, right? So, so Yochebed gives birth to Moses, doesn't know what to do, and so she, she makes a, a, a basket of reeds, puts, um, gives uh, Miriam, that's um, the girl in the reeds, that's Moses' big sister, and says, take Moses down to the river and let's just see what happens. And you know the story. Pharaoh's daughter discovers the baby and her mother's heart kicks in. It just kicks in hard. And she doesn't care about daddy's decree. Even though that daddy's the Pharaoh, she goes, that's a baby. I'm a mother. Now she wasn't a mother, but she decided that day, I am a mom. And she said, I will raise this kid. 
And, and so she does the side part to this story, and I know all mothers go, wow, how come that can't happen to me? That Miriam goes to, to, the, to the, queen, the princess and says, you want me to get one of the Hebrew ladies to nurse the baby until it's older? And, and the, the Pharaoh's daughter goes, yeah, and I'll pay her. So um, Jochebed gets paid to nurse her own kid. What do you think about that, Amanda? I mean, Amanda, Miranda, what do you think about it? You want to get paid? <laughs> Twice over? <laughs> I mean, bring it on. <laughs> I know, exactly, exactly. And so this whole story, I, I, to me, it's just like of the many pictures of, of, of mothering in the Bible, this is one of my favorite because here's a woman that is a mother by choice. It's not a birthing thing, and I'm not discounting that because that's wonderful. But here's a woman that intuitively clicks on and says, I will mother this baby as if he were my own. And it's that aspect of being a mother that I want to explore in the Bible this, this morning. Because, and, and I want you to hear the, hear the scope of what I'm about to say, because I don't want to, I don't want to um, offend you or cause you to stumble. But for years, there's been an argument about the gender of God, right? What is the gender of God? And, and it's just like, well, well he's, he's a male, he's he, he's all this. And, 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 and women go, well, I can't relate to that. You know, what about, you know, it's she, it's she. So we see the extremes, Father God, Mother God, and all this stuff going on. All these things pop out. What does the Bible say? They always got to come down to that. Not what we feel. What does the Word of God say? So let me tell you a couple things. When I read the Bible, God himself, he self-reveals as a father. God reveals himself as a father. Number two, Jesus Christ reveals God as a father and addresses him as a father. Number three, Paul in Romans 8 says, when we have the Holy Spirit, we can cry out, Abba, Father, or Daddy. So we see the Bible definitely identify God as father. Okay, that being said, what I'm going to show you in the Bible this morning is traits of God that are like a mother. Okay? So I'm not saying that God is a mother. I'm saying that God has mother characteristics. Does that make sense? Now, it's important, and this is especially important to all of us. You thought I was going to say just the ladies, right? To all of us. Why? Because God said in Genesis, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So he created them male and female. He created them. So father and mother characteristics are given to you regardless of your gender. Have you ever noticed your marriage? Some of you dads are more like moms. Some of you moms are more like dads. If you come to the Honold house, there's the, whenever we watch a sad movie, the Kleenex is always on my side, <laughs> right? If something breaks in the house, the toolbox is in Brenda's hands. I just lift things. As a matter of fact, the rule is whenever something needs to be done, if I can break it and haul it out, but I'm not allowed to build things, even when I watch the instructions, because you know when I build shelves, they always have that cool slant, <laughs> right? And I can't ever put, you know, in the old days, you put that little board thing in the back, you know, the, the press wood when you're first, you know, you have those kind of furniture, and I could never get it on. I go, I go, you know, but honey, they cut this crooked. She goes, no. And she gets there and gets a little edge and her tools and everything. And I just go, show off. I go, you're such a guy. And it's like, but in our house, we know there's some of that mother stuff. I got it. Some of that father stuff, she got it. But you know what? It's not anything weird other than we're made in the image and likeness of God. That's who you are. And it's really important because what happens is, is sociologically, or in extreme movements of maleness or femininity or feminism, whatever you're going to call it, we begin to redefine God on the basis of our personal bias instead of the truth of the Word of God. Because, because God, hear this, is bigger than any bias you have. And He has to be. Right? So on a day like this, I just want to show you some scriptures that kind of grab me. And Isaiah 66 is the first one. Look at this scripture here. It's really wonderful. This is God describing himself. What does he say? He says, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. Isn't that wild? So God says, 
I'm going to comfort you with a mom's heart right away. How does this translate? Look in 1 Corinthians, and the trivia is, look how many times the author uses comfort in just two sentences. Check this out. For God who said, no, not that one, as um, listen to me, no, not that one either. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and what? The God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Okay, God is a God of comfort four times over. Do you see that in the scripture? What does God say? He's the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. A couple things. Notice, he doesn't say, well, it's a mother trait, so I'm the mother of compassion. He goes, no, I'm a father with the heart of a mother. He says it right away, right? We just identified that from Isaiah. So we have a very secure God who can identify and say there are mothering sides of, of who I am, right? And that's really, really important when we look at that. Because this heart is really, really, I think what we do is when we just look at ourselves in terms of, well, I'm a male, I'm supposed to be like this. You take out a good percentage of who God is in your life because of your physical makeup or because of what the world says you're supposed to be. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's a God of all comfort, right? Isn't it radical? The Holy Spirit, and I don't have this, but so... And then God says, I'll give you a comforter that will be with you forever, right? One of the most controversial movies that came out in the last couple of years is The Shack, right? And we saw it because God comes across Papa as a woman, right? And people are going, ah, what is that? And I was like, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Why? Because what is the, the main character? He has a very bad relationship with his father who was abusive, the character ends up murdering his own father. So why would he pray to a father heart? God retains his identity. He retains his identity. That's important. But he brings out the mother aspect of him, okay? And I want you to be clear on this. I'm not saying that pray to mother God. That's not in the Bible. And I want you to catch that. That's really, really important. That's a feministic, non-biblical view of God. He has characteristics of a mom, but he remains the father. Are you catching that, what I'm saying? And so when I saw that, I go, that's brilliant. Now, some people took it further, but that wasn't the author's intent. The second thing that I thought was really wonderful is that he's the God of all comfort who comforts, and he'll give us another comforter to be with us forever. So when the Holy Spirit is portrayed, it's a woman. And I thought, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. A mother's heart to speak to you right? Characteristics, still the identity. And I really want you to catch that all along, right? Because when you look at the scripture, we tend to, if you, you got to put aside your bias, keep away the extremes, stay theological and say, no, he is the father, but he has a mother's heart. Why? Because there's things he wants us to learn about him, right? How many times has Jesus identified as tender and merciful? And he's still the most macho man on the planet, right? But this heart is so wonderfully tender and kind and awesome, right? Second aspect that we have in here. So mother's comfort is really, look at this, Isaiah 46, 3 and 4. Listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, all the remnant of the people of Israel, you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried you since you were born. Sounds like a mom to me. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you, and I will carry you. I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. Isn't that radical? God has put in human beings that you always want your mom. It says, even in your old age, what? I'll, I'll still give you that mama's heart. Nothing wrong with you. Ladies, your husbands are not immature because they still want their mommies, and they're 64. It's a longing that God is, has in there, but it's a bigger reminder that God says, I'll always bring that heart to you. You'll always be my child. That'll never change. I'll bring that heart. I'm a secure God with a strong mother's heart. Isn't that wonderful? Right? I made you. I'll carry you. I'll sustain you. I'll rescue you. That's, a, that's an incredible, secure thing. Look at this scripture, Isaiah 49, 15, and 16. 
Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? All the moms would say, never, right? We'll get never, right? That's not even a possibility. But look at what God says. Those she may forget, all the women say, what? I'll never forget. Well, God says, well, I'll double never forget. That's all he's saying. He's not insulting any ladies. He goes, because every mom will say, I'll never forget my kid. And God says, I'll double that. Though she may forget, I will not forget you. And every kid, every kid can resonate with that because we know the special place that mom has. Now, some of us have not had moms that have done that for us, but it doesn't change the expectation that God has on moms, right? I will never forget you. And then what does he say? See, I've engraved you on the palm of my hands. Your walls of protection are before me. Where are you? You are etched right here in the hand of God. Isn't that heavy? So God, he again, he wants to, I want you to feel this protection by what? Here's my, my mother's heart here when it comes to this compassion, my love for you. The Bible says this in Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. God, the first meeting, when, when cells begin to get together and life begins, life begins at conception. And life begins with a meeting with the King of kings and Lord of lords who meet you in the womb. I put the word for womb in your notes. What is it? Rakad or Rashad? It meet rakam. The same word used for womb describes mercy, compassion, and tender love. That's in your notes. That's what the womb means. The womb is a place of mercy, compassion, and tender love. Isn't that well? And God in that place, in Psalm, it says, in, in the place of mercy, compassion, and tender love, um, God says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Why? God created you. He knit you together. And you know what? God says that when you look in the mirror, despite your shortcomings, you ought to see something that you go, you know what? You are incredible. God loves you. He loves everything about you. He loves the way you're made. Right? And so that's the heart that God gives us. Look at this last part. We're almost done, actually. Matthew 23, verse 37, Jesus' heart comes out as he describes this mothering aspect of the Father. It's Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he says, he's looking over at the city of Jerusalem. He says this, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing, right? So again, God self-identifies. Now he's saying, I'm, I'm like a hen that wants to put my wings over you and protect you. When you study animal species, it's the woman that does all the hard work, right? When you look at the pretty creatures in the animal kingdom, they're all males. I mean, you know the peacock with all that? That's a dude. You know the plain bird on the side? That's the girl, right? And it's just like as humans, I'm just saying hallelujah that in our kingdom, you all look like this and we look like this. And that's okay, right? Hallelujah. But here's the other thing. The animal kingdom, the guy, the big lion sitting there, he goes, roar. And all the lady lions go out, hunt, clean the cave, do this, raise. They're doing all the work. That's the way the animal kingdom is. Protecting. You think it'd be the guy. It's not. It's the mama hen over the thing. So he says, I want to give a protective and put you under wings. Look what the scripture says. Here's some good ones. Psalm 91, four. He, notice he doesn't say she, even though he's going to use a female uh, metaphor, a mom metaphor. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Isn't that wonderful? So the mother heart of God, a secured... God who says, I'm still a father, but I'm going to do a mother thing on you. Isn't that well? Look at this next scripture, Psalm 17, 8. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Can you ever look less than perfect in the eyes of your mama? No. 
No, as a matter of fact, if anybody says anything, woe to that person that says you're no longer an apple, right? Because it leads to this next scripture, Hosea 13, 8. Like a bear robbed of her cubs, I will attack them and rip them open. Like a lion, I will devour them. A wild animal will tear them apart. Do not mess with the little pups or the little cubs of a mama. Amen? Just do not. Just do not. Do not. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Right? And um, man, I just, I'll just leave that at that. Do not mess with a mama's kids. Deuteronomy 32, 10b to 11. He shielded him and cared for him. He guarded them as the apple of his eye, like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spread its wings to catch them aloft and carries them aloft. This is an interesting picture because God, identifying with the mother, a mother's heart, when little eagles, and Google this, when, when a mom is teaching, yeah, the mom is teaching their little ones how to fly, they take one eagle at a time, get it to the, the perch of the nest, and she nudges it out. <whistles> the bug is going down, going down. And, and, you know, mom's sitting there, you know, flying around going flap, 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 flap. And at some point, she swoops down and catches the bird. See it in the scripture? Like an eagle that stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreads its wings to catch them, and carries them along. This specifically talks about a mama eagle teaching its babies how to fly. Never lets them fall. Always pushes them to do more. A mother's heart is one that says, you start as a little infant and you go through this, but you know what? You're not going to stay a kid forever. There's this thing called adolescence. It's called pick up your own room. It's called make your own sandwich. It's called, you know what? Change your own clothes. You know what? I'm not going to put you on a toilet forever. You stand or sit or do whatever. You know, and finish your business on you, right? No, you do your own homework. Check out and do this. And, and that's the guiding force. God says, that's a mama's job. That's a mama's privilege. What? You know, you're the apple of my eye, but me more appler. Keep going. Don't stop. You hear what I'm saying? So moms that are here, we celebrate you. You represent the heart of God. In so many ways, the heart of care, the heart of comfort, the heart of protection, the heart of safety, the heart of don't mess with my cubs, right? At first service, um, one of our guys that was there was told a story. When he was 17, he lived in a simple house on the mainland. And the, the privilege in their house was that there were, there were several boys, but there was one upstairs room. And the oldest boy always got the room just before they moved out, Right? So it was Bob's turn. He got the room, and he's so happy. So he, he, was a, he was a football player, so he put his weight set in his room. So one night, and his parents were older. They all went to sleep early. Bob, he thought he'd go for a personal best. So he put plenty of weights on it, and he just mentioned some unorthodox number that I thought, what? So he said he, said he figured he could do it. That little voice was saying, get a spotter, get a spotter. But he goes, nah, get him. And you know what happened? He lifts it off puts it down on his chest, and he can't lift it up. So now he's going through all this stuff. He's afraid his dad's going to yell at him because he doesn't have a spotter. So he goes, I can't yell out for help because dad's going to get mad. And, and in the midst of it, he's, he's going, he's starting to feel the weight press on his chest. His, he's getting all the kind, and he, just in the midst of contemplating, he doesn't know what happened, but he heard his mother run up the stairs. He never made a word, sound. But mom ran up the stairs, and he kid you not, and he's tearing as he says it. His mother, with one hand, reached down, pulled the bar, and put it on the thing. <laughs> then she scolded him. You know, what the beep are you doing and everything else? But um, he is tearing. And then he says, my mom wouldn't let me tell that story because she was embarrassed. She goes, she goes no. And he goes, I tell that story. He goes, because that's, that's what moms do. He goes, he goes, he told us in, at first service, he goes, I never cried out. I never said a thing or anything. Mom just knew. She came. And I don't know how she did it, but she lifted that sucker off my chest. And that is a miracle to me. But that's what moms do. That's a mother's heart. And I want to tell you this, and guys, catch this, because the mother's heart is for you too. Because it's in the character of God. 
That's not a chick thing. That's not a girl thing. That's not a mom thing. It's a child of God thing, right? And so the heart of what I felt the Lord wanted me to bring you is that we honor you moms, but us dads need to catch the mom heart of God too because it's ours to have. Do you hear what I'm saying? A mother's heart is a gift, but it's a gift to all of us, right? Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this morning and thank you for your word. God, this week you taught me a lot about you. God, um, I've always felt that you've given me a, a, a strong father's heart, especially in the latter days of speaking into people's lives. But there's something I learned this week, Lord God. I can only be stronger as a parent if I find out your mother's heart too. And your word says, we know the truth that sets us free, Lord. This is the truth about who I can be as your child, Lord. Because this is the truth about who you proclaim that you are, Lord God. You are Father. You are Abba Daddy. But God, I thank you for the mother characteristics that are in you. And they're in me. God, we bless our mommies. Living in with you in heaven. We bless all our young mommies as they're going through and learning, our potential moms. And God, I pray that they would really, really latch on with assurance, Lord, of the mother's heart that you've given them. God, I pray this morning that you would take and give us a mother's heart that goes beyond the biology. I love Pharaoh's daughter, Lord God. Yeah, she's not the birth mother of Moses, but she is the mother of Moses. Because that mother's heart kicked in and she rescued a boy from inevitable death. That's your heart, God. So God, we thank you for a mother's heart. We thank you that you shaped moms to be who they are, God. And without apology, you identify and say, this is my heart for my people. I will bring a mother's comfort to the men and women, boys and girls of God. I will bring a mother's mercy and compassion and love to men and women, boys and girls of God. I will bring a mother's heart of protection and safety to the men and women, the boys and girls of God. This you pledge to us. God, this I expect of you. And this I thank you for.